Welcome to the First Day in Me Church Manassas broadcast, where the Holy Spirit empowers us to come together in the spirit of unity, ready to work and willing to serve. Father, I'm going to say thank you, O oh God, for reviving us again, O oh God. We give you all glory, honor, and praise to your holy, precious Son, Jesus Christ's name, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for giving us the ability of our limbs, having us in our right mind, God, giving us the ability, O oh God, to just think, breathe, walk, talk, and do all the things necessary, O oh God, for us to be a living being, O oh God. But Father God, we praise you for just who you are in our lives, Father God. We praise you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit in our lives, oh God, that we can just walk in there and do the works that you have destined for us to do, oh God, to impact lives, oh God, to help touch lives in a mighty way, oh God. We thank you right now for our leadership of our church, oh God, our pastor, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for what you have done in her life, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for her going to school, oh God, matriculating, oh God, for her doctorate degree, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for all the various different things that she has done, oh God, that we don't even recognize, oh God. But she knows, oh God, when she's in that quiet place, oh God, when she calls on you, when she's shedding tears, oh God, for you, oh God, when she is lifting you up, oh God, to strengthen her, oh God, throughout her day of life, oh God. And Father God, we thank you for her ministerial staff, oh God. Each and every one of the ministers on fire for you, God. Loving you, oh God. Wanting to do what's righteous in your sight, oh God. Reading their word, oh God. Meditating on your word, oh God. Applying your word to their lives, oh God. And we thank you right now, Father God, for each and every member of our church, oh God. Whether you're on a trustee board, whether you're on a steward board, whether you're in a lay ministry, whether you're at YPD, wherever you are, continue to keep that fire burning. Father God, we thank you for the children of our church. We thank you for the parents of the children of our church. We thank you for our senior wise members of our church, oh God, that each and every one of us continue, oh God, to be led by you, Father, in everything we do, Father. I'm asking right now, Father God, for those that have taken a vaccination, oh God, inoculation, oh God, for those that have not taken it yet, those that are concerned, oh God, I ask you right now, do not live by fear. We don't live by fear. We live, he gives us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So in the midst of having a sound mind, if you have any kind of concern about the inoculation or vaccination, oh God, use your sound mind, your godly wisdom to do your due diligence. Do your research, oh God. Ask people that you know that may have taken the inoculation or vaccination, oh God, and do what's right to you. Father God, we love you, God. We praise you for what we're about to do in the community. We praise you for the rest of 2021, God. We praise you for what we're about to do this year, oh God. It's not over yet. We thank you, oh God, for what you're about to do through this church, oh God, through this ministry, oh God. We thank you for the new conference year that's about to start, oh God. We love you, God, and we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. In your holy, precious Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Nobody! Nobody! 
Nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. There is nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody, no way. You can search all over and there is nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Sing that one more time. Nobody. 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 Nobody, nobody. Is anybody glad that there is nobody like Jesus? Hallelujah. We celebrated him on last Sunday that he rose with all power. There ain't nobody like Jesus. I know you think you have some power and others think they have power, but nobody has power like Jesus has. Power. Nobody is like Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody can heal like Jesus. Nobody can save like Jesus. Nobody can pick us up like Jesus. Nobody can turn us around like Jesus. Hallelujah. There is nobody like Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, men's choir. Hallelujah. You all are on fire this morning. <laughs> and we praise God for you. Amen. And amen. Well, let us look to the Lord. In prayer, oh God, our Savior, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for being God. We thank you for your might. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you that you continue to bless us far beyond what we could ever think or imagine. And so we come on this second Sunday in the month of April to give you pray, um, praise, honor, and glory, God. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for leading us. We thank you for guiding us. We thank you for protecting our families. We thank you, God, for the jobs that we have. We thank you, God, for those that are retired, Lord God, and don't have to get up early in the morning, God. We, they thank you. <laughs> they thank you, God. They thank you. Thank you, God, for the little things that we sometimes take for granted, the food on our table, the fact, God, that we have air conditioning in our homes, the fact that we have a room in our house that we can call our own, the fact that we have closets overrunning with clothes and shoes. God, it is because of your goodness. It is because of your grace that we have anything. But God, we want to thank you most for your love. We want to thank you for those intangible things, God, for peace. Ah, oh, God, we want to thank you for joy this morning. And so, God, we thank you for your presence. We ask now, Lord, that you would speak a word that will lift somebody's heart this morning. Speak a word that would encourage somebody. Speak a word, Lord, that will change a life. Decrease me and increase your will and your way. We welcome you speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
we would encourage you to read again the entire chapter of John's Gospel, the 20th chapter. Uh, some of that has been read into your hearing, but I want to read just a few verses uh, to kind of set where we're going this morning. John chapter 20, beginning at verse 26. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas had been willing to give up his life for Jesus. He had followed Jesus for three years. He had traveled with him from town to town. Thomas had heard the teachings of Jesus. He saw Jesus heal people and perform miracles. Thomas had a relationship with Jesus. Thomas loved Jesus, and Thomas followed Jesus, and he learned so much from Jesus. Thomas was there at the Last Supper with Jesus. He was there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Thomas watched Jesus being arrested and carried to Golgotha's hill. He, he believed that he, he, we believe that he was there at the crucifixion, but we don't know where Thomas was after Jesus' death. You can imagine that at the crucifixion, Thomas was heartbroken. His hopes and dreams had vanished. He now finds himself in a place of doubting. Thomas doubted Jesus' resurrection, telling the other disciples, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were, I will not believe. That was an emphatic statement. Thomas said, unless I see it, I will not believe. Believe doubt, doubt, doubt. People do struggle with doubt every now and then. In fact, the book of Jude, uh, chapter 1, verse 22 says, Have mercy on those who doubt. But doubt is not necessarily a bad thing. Did you know that all of the disciples doubted Jesus at one time or another? Peter walked on water until he doubted, and then he began to sink. The disciples had watched Jesus perform miracle after miracle, but when the storms threatened them when they were at sea, they doubted, and they began asking, where is Jesus? The disciples were willing to follow Jesus anywhere until Jesus was arrested rested and then they doubted doubts doubts we even have doubts who who has not asked the question why am i going through this why did my loved one have to die why did i get this diagnosis from the doctor why do i have to suffer through this all of us have doubted at some point in our lives why am i going through this why is this happening to me even we we hear people of doubting, uh, doubting uh, of taking the vaccine. There are doubts in your mind about the vaccine, even though you know personally people that have received the vaccine and are still standing today. Like Thomas, each of us will have doubts at some point in our journey. And watching the high-profile trial, I'm not sure where you are with that, but I have been engaged in listening and watching. And and even listening to the commentators, some believe that even at this point, after hearing the testimony of eyewitnesses who saw with their own eyes what happened, even after a police chief who spoke out against what happened, the fact that the amount of force used on an individual after they have been restrained is not our policy. It is not a part of our training. It is not even 
immoral, even after hearing the compelling expert testimony from the pulmonologist and the testimony from the medical examiners that Mr. Floyd did not die from a heart attack or drugs in his body, but he died because of lack of oxygen due to police force. It was more than Mr. Floyd could take. After all this, and we just, they just finished week two of the trial, it's still not over. But there are some of the mindset that there will not be a conviction of the ex-police officer that killed George Floyd. For in the past, there have been too many other times that we have seen video evidence and the police walked away free. There is an element even now for some of doubt. Doubt is real, and we often want to make fun of Thomas and call him, oh, doubting Thomas. But the truth of the matter is, if we're honest with ourselves, that you have some doubts and I have some doubts. Keep looking straight ahead. I, I know you know God's word. I know that you pray. I know every now and then you fast. But in life, every now and then, there are some things that will make you go, hmm. You know and you believe that things are going to work out. But at the same time, every now and then, something will, something will happen that will make you go, hmm. Doubt is a part of life. And in our text, we learn that the disciples were in a room with the door shut. They had locked the door. They were talking probably very low because they were afraid. They were afraid for their lives. Since Jesus had been crucified, some of the disciples thought that they would be next. It was quite a contrast to the boldness they had just, uh, had, had the boldness just a few days earlier when Peter was bold enough to cut off a man's ear in the garden. And Peter was the one that said, I would never leave you, Jesus. I would never deny you. But now he is with the other disciples, worried, disgusted with himself, and afraid. The disciples had gathered together, fearful of the Jews, and had locked the doors in the house. But that's when Jesus entered and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then Jesus showed them his hands and his side. The disciples, seeing the master with their own eyes, were awestruck. The other disciples told Thomas uh, because at that time Thomas uh, was not with them. The other disciples said, Thomas, uh, we have seen Jesus. For you see, Lord have mercy. Thomas said to them, uh, I wasn't with y'all, but unless I see the nail prints in his hand uh, and, and the, the piercing in his side, I will not believe. It was a week later, church. Uh, listen, one week later where the disciples were in the room again, this time... Uh, Thomas was with them. Jesus came through the locked doors again and said, peace be with you. Listen, church, Thomas had been sitting in doubt for a week. Thomas had been wrestling with his doubts for a week, and maybe you have been wrestling with doubts. Doubts can keep you from moving forward. Doubts can keep you from actions that are needed to get something done. But when Jesus shows up with Thomas and the other disciples sitting there, Jesus didn't laugh at Thomas. Jesus didn't make fun of Thomas. Jesus didn't say, Thomas, I don't believe you, man. We've been walking together for three years. I don't even believe you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. But Jesus simply said to Thomas, if you need some evidence, if you need some proof that I have risen, then here I am. And maybe you have some doubts even now. Doubts show us that Jesus will meet us in the midst of our doubts. When you look at scripture, you see people who have doubted throughout the Bible. Moses Moses doubted that he could do what God was asking him to do. Esther doubted when she was tasked with going before the king in an attempt to save her people from destruction. David doubted when he said, why do the wicked prosper? John the Baptist doubted when he said, are you the one or should we look for another? Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, even doubted. And we see that the disciples doubted 
when the women told them that they saw Jesus. I've come to tell you that Jesus will meet you in your doubts. Jesus will meet you in your struggles. We have made it over this past 12 months because even in our doubts with the pandemic, Jesus has shown up in our lives. And you ought to be able to praise God because even in the midst of your doubts, God has shown up in your life. God has given you evidence that he has been there with you all along. Doubts, church, are a part of life. And so we must choose faith over our doubts. The enemy will use doubt to keep you from God and to keep you from doing what God wants you to do in life. Thomas has to make a choice. He has to choose whether to continue to doubt or he has to choose faith. And there will always be questions in our lives. And so the question is, when you have questions, is will you move forward in faith or will you continue to doubt? When Thomas sees Jesus, he can continue to doubt or he can continue to believe. Doubt, church, is negative and often passive. Doubt allows life to do something to you, but faith is positive and faith is active and faith allows you to do something to life. When you doubt, you are limited and narrow in your thinking. And so a person who doubts is like a goldfish that's been in a small bowl for so long that when the goldfish is put in a large aquarium, the goldfish will continue to swim around in one area because it does not realize that it is no longer limited. Faith is expansive. Faith is freedom. Faith allows you to rise up to new heights. Look at Thomas. Thomas found the cure for his doubt, and it resulted in his confession of his faith. When he saw Jesus, and Jesus said, here I am. I am the proof. I am the evidence. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. When Thomas saw Jesus, he no longer demanded to put his finger in his side or, or touch the holes in his hands. Faith has found in faith was found in the awareness of Jesus' presence. He didn't need evidence because he had now the experience. Thomas said, My Lord and my God, he had been there when Jesus taught. He had been there when Jesus had done the miracles. He had been there when Jesus saved the sick people and healed them. He had been there when Lazarus was raised from the dead. God wants to do something in your life. And the fact that Thomas said, my Lord, that speaks to the power and authority of God. There is no situation then that, that Thomas realizes that he cannot deal with. There is no situation, church, that you cannot overcome, even when you doubt. There is no situation that you cannot handle, even when you have some doubt doubt in your mind. There is no situation that you cannot surrender and give over to God for him to come in and bless you. We ought to say to ourselves that God is Lord of our lives. He is Lord over my money. He is, is he Lord over your money? He is Lord over my family. He is Lord over my life. He is Lord over my job. God, you are Lord over everything. You you are my God. And so when we can make that declaration like Thomas, my Lord and my God, it is then we remove the doubts because God is or ought to be the Lord of your life. Doubts will not have control over you, but doubt will begin to lead you into worshiping God. Give God everything. Even when you don't understand, <laughs> give it to God. And it's all right to ask questions even in doubt, but move from your, hmm, move from your doubt, hmm, to believe that God can do everything in your life, choose faith over 
doubt. Amen. Father, we come before your presence. Thanking you for this lesson of Thomas. <laughs> God, that he didn't believe it when the disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. And Thomas said, unless I can put my fingers in his side and touch the nail prints of his hand, I will not believe. And God, some of us are that same way. When we're faced with an unfavorable diagnosis, some of us in our heart, we don't tell everybody, but deep down in those hidden places, perhaps we are like Thomas, I will not believe. But it is in those moments that Jesus will step into your life. He will step into your doubt, step into your struggle, and then you will move from doubting to worshiping and saying, my Lord and my God, I know you are able. I don't see how it's going to work out, but I'm standing on your word today. I don't know how it's going to work out, God, but I'm standing on your word today. And so, God, we prayed this morning for those who have doubt, Lord. Some have gone longer than Thomas, longer than a week longer than a month perhaps your doubt of something has even been a year but God comes today as the proof and the evidence that he is risen and that you can overcome anything you don't have to be worried about anything because God reigns and so God we thank you this morning for the lessons that Thomas has taught us, that even in our doubts, we can declare my Lord and my God. Thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Perhaps this morning you have never received Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior. You are not able to exclaim my Lord and my God. But if you desire to receive Christ into your life this morning. We ask that you would contact us through our website at famechurch.com. There's also a number at the bottom of your screens that you may call. If you, if you desire to receive Christ into your life, if you desire to be a part of our ministry here at First Day and Me, call that number. Someone is waiting there to walk with you, to talk with you, and to share with you how to receive Christ into your life. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you all, family. Uh, we look forward uh, to sharing this week in our annual conference. Uh, and I pray until we gather together again next week that the Lord would bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, power, love, patience, love, patience, today, tomorrow, and forever. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. This has been the First AME Church Manassas special online worship service. We pray that you were truly blessed and encourage you to share this message with everyone you know. We temporarily switched to this special online worship service for the health and safety of our congregation and those that worship with us and strongly urge everyone to follow the directions of health professionals to keep you, your family, and loved ones safe. We also ask that you continue to regularly support First AME Church of Manassas through your generous tithes and offerings through PushPay by texting Fame Church to 77977. Or you can give online at famechurch.com forward slash giving. Or you can mail your contributions to First AME Church of Manassas, 10313 South Grand Avenue, Manassas, Virginia, 20110. Once again, we pray that you were blessed by today's message and encourage you to share it post it and bless somebody else with a word from God. And most importantly, let us continue to pray for our world, our leaders and health professionals, as well as the most vulnerable among us. Be safe and be blessed.